Who remembers this mixtape? <laughs> This is one of the first high school mixtapes that I've ever watched. This was basically the beginning of the Ball's Life movement, and it started with this kid. This mixtape had a lot of people thinking that this kid was going to be a bona fide superstar. He was drawing no comparisons to NBA legend Allen Iverson, but nowadays those comparisons seem crazy and outlandish to make. And most NBA circles don't bring up Brand Jennings anymore. Why is that? And what happened to Brand Jennings' potential superstar career? But enough with the introduction. Let's jump into the video. Now, Brand Jennings was born and raised in Compton, California, which can be tough as the city is known for its violence and gang culture. Jennings decided to stay away from that culture and focused on basketball as a young kid. He actually grew up watching Tyson Chandler play basketball at Dominguez High School and was actually one of their ball boys. Ironically, the kid who was just a ball boy would eventually go on to star for the school during his freshman and sophomore years of high school before eventually transferring to Oak Hill in West Virginia for his junior and senior season. At Oak Hill, Jennings would pop on the national scene and take recruiters by storm with his amazing play. In his junior year, he averaged around 15 points and 11 assists and played in a nationally televised game against Simeon, which featured future NBA MVP Derrick Rose. Jennings kind of struggled in this game though, as Simeon would upset Oak Hill and Jennings would get outplayed by Rose Jennings did finish the game with 19 points, but Rose completely dominated the matchup. Rose put up 28 points, 9 assists, and 8 rebounds, which is a near triple-double. Jennings would finish his junior year as the 6th best prospect in his class and the overall best point guard in the class of 2008. But this would just be some foreshadowing of what was to come, because in his senior year, he would completely dominate high school basketball. He put up 35 and a half points per game and set a school record for points in a season with 1,312 points. For his efforts, he will be named Mr. Basketball USA, Naismith Prep Player of the Year, as well as a McDonald's All-American and won the MVP for the game. At this point, Jennings is on top of the world and everyone's thinking future star and he's getting quite a lot of comparisons to Allen Iverson now, with people saying that he's AI with more passing and guard-like tendencies. Jennings received a lot of major college offers and originally he committed to USC before decommitting and is still committing to Arizona. But due to his SAT numbers, he couldn't get in, and unfortunately for him, the NBA did away with the prep to pro. But that didn't stop Jennings from going pro. He came straight out of high school and instead took his talents overseas and signed a $1.6 million contract with Virtus Roma, an Italian basketball team in Rome. He also was the first basketball player to sign with Under Armour as he did at that season. He signed a contract with them for roughly around $2 million to promote the shows during his time overseas. But unfortunately, Jennings didn't have a good run for the club, only averaging 7.6 points, one rebound, one assist, and one steal in roughly around 20 minutes of action in the 16 EuroLeague games that he appeared in. His performance overseas had a lot of scouts questioning if he was ready for the NBA because even with all the good behind his potential, he was still a 6'2 and 165 pound point guard. And even though he was a good athlete by high school standards, he was only about an average NBA athlete, maybe a little bit quicker, so you could say probably a little bit of average, but he was around average in athleticism for an NBA player. Also, scouts worried about his ability to finish, even though he can get to the lane because of his great shot creation ability, finishing seemed like it would be a problem because of his slim frame. They didn't think he could absorb contact well, and they was pretty spot on about that. With all that being said, Jennings was still selected with the 10th pick in the 2009 NBA draft by the Milwaukee Bucks, and he started his career relatively well as a rookie. Dropping 17 in his first game, but it was in his sixth game where he gave us a glimpse of what he could become and dropped 32 points and nine assists 
on 58% shooting from the field and 100% from three, which led to a six point win over the Denver Nuggets that featured Chauncey Billups and Carmelo Anthony. And if y'all thought that was a good performance, he followed that up with an even crazier game. Because in his seventh NBA game, he dropped 55 points with five assists and five rebounds on 62% from the field and 88% from three. And he did this against future two-time MVP Steph Curry. These were the first two games of a streak of games in a 10-day span where he averaged 31 points, six assists, and four rebounds on 51% from the field and 54% from three. This had the NBA world hyped because they thought they were watching the beginning of a legendary NBA career. But unfortunately, he came back down to earth. He did end up helping lead the Bucks to the playoffs and he averaged 15 and a half points along with five assists, but on pretty bad shooting efficiency because he shot under 40% from the field, but he still earned his spot on the all-rookie first team. So that's good. Now in his second season, he wound up his scoring average to around 16 points per game with four assists, but it was still shoot under 40% from the field. He did miss some time with a broken foot and the Bucks would end up missing the playoffs. In his third season, he would have the best year of his career as he would average 19 points and five assists and shoot a career high 42% from the field. But the Bucks would miss the playoffs for the second year in a row. And after a career year, Jennings entered talk with Milwaukee about an extension on his rookie contract. At this point, even though Jennings was a near 20 point per game scorer, Milwaukee wasn't completely ready to commit to giving him the max extension. There was also Jennings, who many had speculated wanted to play in a bigger market. And in the end, no extension was able to be made, and the Bucks just picked up his player option. The next year, Jennings, along with Monte Ellis, who was acquired in a trade the year prior, helped lead the Bucks back to the playoffs with a record of 38 and 44 to play the Miami Heat, where Jennings will famously say that he has the Bucks win the series in six against last year's champs. And the first game of the series, he did drop 26 points, which was the second most in the game behind LeBron's 27. But unfortunately, the Bucks would get blown out that game, 110 to 87. And that was just an indication of the series because Miami would go on to sweep the series and kick the Bucks out the playoffs in the first round. This would mark the end of Brandon Jennings' time in Milwaukee because during the offseason, he was traded to Detroit Pistons for Brandon Knight, and Chris Middleton in a sign trade where he got a new contract for three years and 25 million. In his first season with Detroit, he averaged 15 and a half points per game and a career high 7.6 assists, but yet again shot below 40% from the field. And overall, the Detroit Pistons was a really bad team and the roster didn't make any sense as the team regularly ran a lineup that featured Josh Smith, Greg Morrow, and Andre Drummond, who are all bigs. So this team was really lacking perimeter help, and they finished with a terrible record of 29 and 53. The following season will be much of the same, as Jennings, as Jennings averaged pretty much the same amount of points, but this time he did shoot 40% from the field. Still bad efficiency, but better. The Pistons were still a bad team, but the team did start to perform better after waving Josh Smith after giving him that monster contract. And this is where things really turned bad though for Jennings, because as he was picking up steam and his play was getting a little bit better, his season would come to an end. As on January 24th of 2015, against his former team, the Milwaukee Bucks, he tore his Achilles. Now, as you know, most players don't recover very well from Achilles tears. And that was even more true at the time. Knowing this, the Detroit Pistons decided to make a trade for another starting caliber point guard and Reggie Jackson. The team will finish the season with a record of 32 and 50. Now, Achilles tears usually take about a year to recover from, and Jennings made his return back to action on December 19th, but this time playing in the Pistons G League affiliate team. He had played one game there before returning to the main roster, making his NBA debut on December 29th, 2015, and then lost to the Knicks. And on February 16, 2016, he was traded to Orlando Magic. He would finish the season with an average of seven points and three assists. And in 2016, he would sign another contract with the New York Knicks. But unfortunately, he still couldn't recapture his old form 
He played in around 58 games with the Knicks, averaging 9 points per game and 5 assists on below 40% shooting from the field. He was then waived by the Knicks and was picked up by the Wizards to finish out the 2016-17 season. After not getting picked up by a team in the offseason, he signed a contract to play in China and he performed really well over there but was released by the team after 13 games. He then came back and played for the Milwaukee Bucks G League team before receiving a 10-day contract with the main team. In his debut for the Milwaukee Bucks, he put up a near triple-double with 16 points, 12 assists, and 8 rebounds and looked way more in control than in his younger years. He would play in 14 games for the Bucks that season but wouldn't return to the club the following season. He signed one more contract with the Zenit St. Petersburg of the VTB United League, but was released by the team after 10 games. As things stand right now, that looks to be the end of Brand Jennings' basketball career. Sometimes it's crazy to think that at one point, he was the best basketball prospect in the world. And while he didn't live up completely to expectation, he was still a very solid starting point guard for most of his career. And to me, he was always one of the funnest players to watch because his game was so flashy and smooth. Honestly, he was one of the first prospects to choose a different way, paving the way for guys like LaMelo and RJ Hampton. These days, Genius is actually a fashion designer working on a clothing brand, Tub Crowd, which is pretty dope, honestly, and it's good to see that he found peace and happiness outside of basketball. I'm wishing him the best and hope he continues to be successful, but that is it for the video. I'll catch y'all on the next one. Peace.